All right, last class, we just, we just introduced a new wrinkle into these statically indeterminate torsional uh, problems in that now if it says something about a temperature increase, then don't forget about delta L equals alpha delta T L. Right, the change in length equals alpha delta T L in addition to F L over E A, which we already have. All right, so what if we've got these, uh, and so here are the um, properties of the, the, we've got a red brass rod A B that has that E 14.6 times 10 to the three KSI and the alpha, this coefficient of thermal expansion, 9.8 times 10 to the negative six per degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, and then BC is an aluminum rod um, with that modulus of elasticity and that thermal expansion right there. All right, so they're fixed at their ends. Uh, if there's no load in the members when it has a temperature of 50 degrees Fahrenheit, determine the average normal stress in each member when the temperature gets up to 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Also, how far will the collar be displaced, maybe left or right a little bit, <clears throat> and gives the cross-sectional area of each member. All right, so we still have statics, right? I would call this FA and FC. I, I just tend to guess compression. This one, I think it's obvious that if there's nothing, if there are no forces there, and you increase the temperature, uh, ABC is gonna want to expand, so yes, the walls are in compression. But just guess those supports and stick with it. And if you answer, if you get FC of negative something, then that means, oh, it was actually keeping it, pulling it in. And can walls do that? Walls can do that if it is fixed, right? Walls can push or pull. Uh, if it's bolted like that, if it, is, um, if it is fixed on the wall, one thing that it could not do let me see here. Uh, that wall right there could not, you, you could not have tension at that wall, right? You could have tension at A, but if, if there's a gap and it's just pushing or touching it, then that wall can't uh, pull in tension. All right, but anyway, guess tension or compression and stick with it. All right, so uh, statics. This is still in static equilibrium. So I want to sum up forces in X, FA minus FC equals zero. Seems silly, but yeah, FA is equal to FC. Because there's no force at B, right? And don't think about any internal forces or internal things. So FA equals FC, but that's not enough. And my moment equation doesn't help me. Some of the force in Y doesn't help me. So what can we do compatibility? Compatibility, compatibility. All right, and what, what would this one look like? Are they equal to each other? Are they a ratio? Is there a gap? Do they add up to something? Uh, I like to say, I would say the delta L of section AB plus the delta L of section BC adds up to zero. That's what I would, I would say. And because there's a temperature change, I'm going to think about FL over EA and alpha delta TL plus FL over EA and alpha delta TL. Right. Now, each of these delta Ls can have two ways that it is expanding. Okay. So, F, what is the F inside? section a b uh, I, I would throw away that half of it and look at this and let's look carefully because i've got to be consistent if i cut this right here if i've got f a if i've got f a right there i drew it that way what do i need at that cut i need a compression f a right so i've got a compression FA inside of this section, FL over E, let me think about this, E 
14.6 times 10 to the negative or 10 to the positive 3 KSI FL over EA what is the area 1.75 inches squared Uh, my first instinct is to change that feet to inches and I could, and I could, but what really is happening is those three are unitless. Those three cancel out. So actually the per square inch right here cancels out with the inch right there. The kip will cancel out with the kip right there. You can change that feet to inches, but it's not necessary and we'll, we'll see later on how and why all right so now plus alpha delta t l i'm just looking at this section this material its alpha was 9.8 times 10 to the negative six the units were per degrees fahrenheit delta t change in temperature change in temperature t2 minus t1 positive 70 degrees Fahrenheit and my length right there three feet so also right here those units cancel out so as long as these units cancel out right here as long as this has the same units as that feet and feet then I'm okay I could multiply that times 12 multiply that times 12 I could multiply every single thing times 12 in this equation uh, but that's not necessary well so since uh, the only reason we all plugged in Fahrenheit instead of uh, oh wait no the alpha was given in Fahrenheit so we have to, to switch the range. Yes, yes, yeah. This, this alpha will I think in the back of the book it gives you both Fahrenheit or Celsius. So yeah, yeah, it was given as Fahrenheit. This is just an English uh, unit problem. Yeah. All right. So now let's look at section B C. Section BC. I've got FL over EA for section BC. What is the F inside section BC? Well, I, I cut it right here. I always like to keep the simpler side, the shorter side. So I would cut it and I would throw the rest of that away. And so what do I have right here? I, I, I drew that FC. So what do I need at that cut? To sum up to zero for static, I need an FC right there, and that's compression. So I need a negative FC right here inside this FL over EA. All right, so we're still on the left-hand side of this equation. Let me, sorry, move this, kind of give myself room. So now that's the F inside this section. The L of this section is two feet. The E of this section, 10.6 times 10 to the 3 KSI. The A, 1.75 inches squared. So that's FL over EA of that section, plus the alpha delta TL of this section. The um, 12.8, let's see, the alpha is 12.8 times 10 to the negative 6 per degrees Fahrenheit. 70 degrees Fahrenheit, its length is two feet. All of that was on the left-hand side of the equation equals zero. All of that on the left-hand side of the equation equals zero. All right, uh, I prefer to simplify this as much as I can. Go ahead and go ahead and give me a number for that. Go ahead and give me a number for that. Go ahead and plug those in and it simplifies down. And so I have, Here's one equation right here. I've got my compatibility equation, and here's my other equation. So th they'll be more difficult than this. This one, okay, well, let me just plug in FC right there. And then I've got two equations, two unknowns. You can solve for both of those. And do you see why? Uh, yes, we could have multiplied that times 12, that times 12, that times 12, that times 12, but, you know, I could just divide all that out. We'd get the same answer. Okay, so I hope you are a little bit smaller than I did. I would get FC is 17.09 kips. 
and also FA, 17.09 kips. Did it ask for the internal force, the internal normal force? I wish it did. It asked for the internal normal stress, internal normal stress. So not much more work, but the stress is N over A, right? 17.09 kips over an area of 1.75 inches squared, 9.77 KSI for um, section BC and for section AB. So sigma, and, and this will, it, they will not, definitely not always have the same stress, but this was a special case. They had the same force and they had the same area. So yes, they have the same stress. Both of them are 9.77 KSI. Now, I don't want to redo all this work. We have a lot of these values and these numbers in our calculator. It also says, how far will the collar be displaced? How far will the collar be displaced? I know that this plus this adds up to zero. But I feel like one of the materials is probably, I don't know if you would call it weaker, but they have different um, thermal stresses. They also have different modulus, moduli of elasticity. Um, and so this collar might shift a little bit to the right or a little bit to the left. How can I calculate that value? So what it's really asking is, what is the delta L of section AB? What is the delta L of section AB? Or, what is the delta L of section BC? Do you see that we're actually going to get equal and opposite? I, I, could, I could find the delta L of section AB, or I could find the delta L of section BC. Or you can do both, just double check. And, and it's in this equation. It's actually in that equation, that right there, those first two terms added together, that's the delta L of section AB. Or these two terms added together, that's the delta L of section BC. So let's, let's don't redo this whole thing. Let's just take those terms, Delta L of section AB is the FL over EA and the alpha delta TL, which, which we already had. I've got the delta L of section AB positive 0.64 times 10 to the negative 3. Uh, and I've actually got inches, a very, very, very small. So I, I converted those to inches also, actually. Um, or if you had done this delta L of section BC, you know what you'd have gotten? Negative 0.64 times 10 to the negative 3 inches. So how far will it be displaced? It will be displaced 0.64 times 10 to the negative 3 to the right. AB expands, BC contracts. Okay. And it depends on the alpha and the E. Also the lengths and the, and the A. I mean, it depends on all, all, these, all these things. Okay? But step back, look over this. I, I noticed it was a statically indeterminate problem because it had supports on both sides and because my statics didn't give me all the information I needed. And so I thought, okay, what's the delta L? What's my compatibility? What's the delta L doing? In this case, they, they would have to add up to zero. And don't forget that the delta L, both FL over EA and alpha delta TL, you'll get the forces, but the question usually many times asks for the stress. All right, next.